Love, the Beginning and the End Bible Class Lecture by the Holy Father, the Supernatural Teacher, Leader Olomba Olomba Obu Text, John Chapter 13 Verses 1 to the End Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God, and went to God, he risen from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all, I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that, when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit, and testified, and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him, that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is, to whom I shall give a sop, when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, By those things that we have need of against the feast, or, that he should give something to the poor. He then having received the sop went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come, so now I say to you. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Would thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow, till thou hast denied me thrice. John chapter 13 verses 1 to 38 My beloved children, do not ever look at any situation or event from a negative perspective. Everything that happens does so to glorify God so always allow the will of God to prevail in all situations. 
Your primary duty is to practice the teachings of the Holy Spirit and not just to hear them. It is unprofitable for you to come here every day to listen to teachings on love yet you fail to practice love. Our Lord Jesus Christ is an embodiment of love. While on earth he practiced love and taught us to love our fellow men. Our love for others should not be conditional. What you practice now is sensual love based on emotion. We should emulate our Lord and bring forth the fruit of love to convince people that we are Christ. Do not say that you will wait till you have acquired wealth before you practice love. It is a sign quanon for all practicing Christians. Love was used to create all that you see in heaven and on earth so without love nothing can exist in the world. To buttress the importance of love, read through our main text, John chapter 13 verses 1 to the end. Study that chapter and you will discover what love has done for mankind. The decision our Lord took to come and the brutalization he underwent in the hands of men clearly demonstrate that love accomplishes all things. Without love there will be no joy. Read 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 to end. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, whosoever sinneth hath not seen him neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you, he that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath these words good, and sit his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son Jesus Christ, and love one another, as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us, by the Spirit which he hath given us. 1 John chapter 3 verses 1-24 to All the good things man enjoys on earth today are a result of love. Love is the sustaining force for mankind and it is better practiced and cherished. Whatever is built on love can never falter and is always positive. Love is at the core of everything. Love is the beginning and end of all things. Our main duty in this kingdom is to love one another for without love you are not fit for the kingdom. It is wrong for you to attend church service every day and participate in all church activities yet your next door neighbor is dying of hunger, sickness and lack while you wallow in wealth. You must always use what you have to alleviate the sufferings of others. It is disheartening to see mankind continue to ignore and disregard the love of God. 
How can someone with many children and relations suffer neglect at old age only to have all his wealth shared out at death? Take Chief Edem Edet for instance, he is an elder in a church, an ethic chief and a senior member of the Abong's council. He is old and has many children and several relations. They have all deserted him now because he is old and sick. He sent to me that he is sick so I sent him something through Dickens Merriman. When the money was given to him, his people went in and stole the money. Again I sent some money to him the second time. He recounted the sad story of how his children stole the first money I had sent him. He then decided that the deaconess keep the money I sent so that he could ask her any time he needed money. This is someone at whose death people will go and sing and dance and eat, yet nothing is being done to sustain him. The same people that have deserted him are the same people that will rush to fight and struggle for his property when he dies. Does the action of his children and relations show the much talked about love that the Holy Spirit teaches us? The experience of that chief and many others that abound all over the world are a clear indication that apart from this kingdom there is nowhere else you can find love in the world. A few days ago Deaconess Mary Monk visited the chief with some money. On getting back home she found her cousin waiting. She told the inquisitive cousin where she had been and the cousin was very angry that she is wasting money on a sick old man. Yet this cousin is a so-called born-again Christian. She stopped going to Monk's house because of Monk's disposition towards the sick and needy. Anybody that hates his brother is of Satan. If you profess to be a churchgoer yet you do not live a lifestyle consistent with the scriptures, you are deceiving yourself. Do not allow yourselves to be led astray by the greed and love for money that has led to the frightening growth of hatred in the world. Start now to visit the sick and extend your hands to the needy for in so doing you fight a good fight. Visiting people makes for a healthy relationship and instills in the person visited a sense of belonging. That is how to practice being your brother's keeper. Love is not that heavy a load to carry. It does not hurt and it is not difficult to practice. I demand that you demonstrate to others the same love I show to you. Our sojourn on this earth is out of the boundless love of God for us. We should show appreciation for this love by loving others. We should see ourselves as one and try to share in the problems of others because the truth is that we all came into this world empty-handed and we shall all depart empty-handed. I believe the scales have fallen off your eyes by now. I believe you have now realized that without love the world is void. Life without love is meaningless. All the things in this world, leadership, power, authority, influence, wealth are temporary. Only love is eternal. This is so because love is God and his will for man is that we should love ourselves. If we love ourselves, others will emulate us and this will bring glory to God. I have taught you to forgive one another and to use the spirit of forgiveness in your dealings with people. You should always cover others' iniquities the same way God covers yours. Do not disgrace people, use the word of God to correct those that err. Many people would like to come to God but they are afraid of the outcome. This set of people imagines God to be wicked as they are, whereas God is merciful and forgiving. Take the recent case where a pastor from the Church of God mission came here and the father received him warmly. It is well known that the prayer and wish of Church of God mission was that God should kill the Holy Father, leader Olamba Olamba Obiu. The church and its leadership called the father all sorts of names and have leveled all sorts of unsubstantiated accusations against him. The pastor went back and narrated to his archbishop how well he was received. The archbishop was surprised at the father's benevolence. This love is exactly what is required of all of us. We have to forgive others and lead an exemplary lifestyle worthy of emulation by all. Let only good words proceed from your mouth for it is in so doing that the good things of life will attend you. There is nothing like juju and fetish, as you believe. It is just your imagination running wild. Free your mind from evil and negative thoughts and you will not have problems again. Many people have confessed that the word of the Father is life-giving and protective. A group of brethren went on house-to-house -house ministry. One of the houses they went to was the palace of the traditional ruler of Edeba. On hearing that they were brotherhood members, he came out and received them very well. He told them that the leader of their church leader Olamba Olamba Obu is his father, that his words minister life to him. 
He said he knew the father right from when he was only eight years old, and that the father has been protecting him ever since. Anything built on love must stand, nothing can stand without love. If you have love you will serve God and not hurt your fellow man. Read 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 6 to 11, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have heard from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Brethren, have you now seen why you should seek first the kingdom of God so that everything else will be added unto you? The current happenings in the world call for love for one another from us all. This is not the time to concern ourselves with materialism. Each one of us should practice righteousness based on universal love as the Father has demonstrated for all to see. Refrain from materialism stop regarding money as the source of existence of man. Go into the vineyard and teach the world all that I have taught you. If you do this wholeheartedly, you will experience a new dawn in your life. After all God is the controller of everything. Money is at the root of the problems plaguing the world. Surprisingly, it is this same money that you are ready to stake your life for. Money is not life, does not give anybody peace of mind, rather it kills and makes us derail from the path of rectitude. If you have faith in the Father as the owner and controller of everything, you will have everything because as an embodiment of love you will not have any problems in the world. I teach you to hold on to the Father and see Him as the ultimate source of all your needs. Unless you desist from loving money, you will work yourself to condemnation. We have God as everything for us so we do not need to worry ourselves for anything. He is sufficient for us. Have no regards for the wisdom and knowledge of this world for they are no use to you. The so-called teachers and rulers of this world are quack and so are their knowledge and wisdom. If you follow the truth embedded in love as taught in this kingdom, you will have no problems. Surrender yourselves to God completely and come, rejoice and live with Him so that life and peace will return to you and your family. If you keep my words and follow my footsteps by practicing righteousness at all times, you will surely be with me wherever I may be. There is nothing as rewarding as serving God and doing His will at all times. God cares for you more than you care for yourself. Since 1962 I have been repeating it that no brotherhood member should engage in evil practices. Do not seek protection from any other quarters or through any means because the Father protects you. A lot of you do not know that God rewards you instantly when you obey Him and that you receive outright punishment when you disobey or doubt Him. Recall how Zacharias was struck dumb when he doubted the birth of John the Baptist. He remained dumb till John was born. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. If you doubt him you are instantly punished but that does not prevent his will from manifesting at the appropriate time. You have to gird your loins so that the Muslims do not take this kingdom from you. The Muslims know me more than the Christians. They respect and honor me more. If you go close to them you will discover that they value everything about me to the extent that my photograph and name are go to them. Even in Mecca, Muslims have my name boldly written on the Kaaba. For a long time they had wanted me to establish my headquarters in Koduna. If I were to accept you would have been thrown out of the kingdom by now. Everybody in the world knows the truth about me. Those that do not believe the truth are those that are still indulging in evil practices. They are the thieves and robbers that use falsehood to earn their daily bread. Thieves and robbers can never believe in the truth. Read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposite and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, 
showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not, that, when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Beloved brethren, have you not seen how the world is disintegrating? The wars in all the continents attest to this fact. People have formed various groups with various names and various religious dogmas. These include, but are not limited to, Hinduism, Baha'i Faith, Buddhism, Ikanka. There is confusion and consternation everywhere. People are busy fighting wars and no one seems to be interested in serving God. There is an insatiable lust for material wealth everywhere but let me make it clear to you that all is vanity. A lot of you wonder how this kingdom of God will take over rulership of the world. You wonder how you can survive without banks, industries and other establishments. You forget that God owns everything and is free to do as he pleases. I will always remain here, in the altar, and make pronouncements that will shape things. Just believe in God and you shall not be moved. Read Revelation chapter 2 verses 20 to end. Notwithstanding I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depth of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Revelation chapter 2 verses 20 to 29. Can you now see the things that await you? Life, salvation, peace and joy await you provided you overcome. If you overcome, you shall rule the world with a rod of iron. Do not be frightened by the occurrences in the world. They are happening as designed by Satan but will soon pass away to pave the way for the glory of God to be made manifest all over the world. Hold fast to the truth. I, personally, do not desire the material things of this world. The kingdom of God is enough for me. In your own case, you have been deceived and led astray because of your inordinate lust for the materials of this world. So you are found patronizing native doctors and juju priests and occultists. The Muslims make endless trips to Mecca to make money. What do you really gain from all this? Are you forgetting that God's injunction is that you seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and other things shall be added unto you? The kingdom of God is all and in all, the ultimate. Read Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 12, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, 
the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and, behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee, you must let go of the material things of this world if you desire the kingdom of God. Do not agitate for things to happen according to your will. Always allow God's will to manifest. God is the doer of all things in this kingdom and he uses his angels to accomplish his will. Love is power the ultimate thing for everyone to seek is the love of God. When you have love, every other thing falls into place. Look at what is happening in the kingdom today, how people are competing to build cathedrals for the worship of God. It is the Father that is responsible for rekindling the Spirit in them. You will see how the glory of God will manifest in the near future. Power and God are in the brotherhood of the cross and star. One of our pastors testified that when he rode to a certain country for power, he was directed to 34 Umbo Street, Calabar. He was informed that the so-called strong men of the world depend on the Father for power. Stop roaming the world in search of power because you will never find it. The Father is the reservoir of all powers. Seek Him. The Father is the only source of salvation for the whole world. He is the power that sustains the world. All roads lead to 34 Umbo Street, Calabar, the world headquarters of the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. If you seek salvation you have to repent of your evil deeds and hold on to the truth, which is the love of God. Life will elude all those that do not have the love of God. This kingdom that a lot of you toy with is the long-awaited kingdom of God, the new heaven and new earth where righteousness, peace, joy and love abound. All the things of this world have passed away. This is a new dispensation where no sin is required. Do not be afraid of anything in the world because the world is rather afraid of you. Be content where you find yourselves for therein lies your blessings. Read Luke chapter 6 verses 20 to end. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples, and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye, when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for, behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you, when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek offer also the other, and him that taketh away thy cloak forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners, to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged, condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned, forgive, and ye shall be forgiven, give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all it shall be measured to you again. And he spake a parable unto them, Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? 
The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather the grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house, and dig deep, and laid the foundation on a rock, and when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth, and doeth not, is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Luke chapter 6 verses 20 to 49 I have laid everything bare to you, but you still doubt. I wonder whether your doubt is due to your sins or plain ignorance. Doubt no more or you will miss the blessings of this kingdom. Those that do the will of God never will grow old and their needs are always met that their joy may be full. It is not in your best interest to be a passive member of this kingdom. You should be active. Divest yourselves of whatever life you led before you were called into this kingdom. Purge yourselves of your old lives. Destroy all the things you acquired for protection because they are of no use and you were really never protected. Follow God and practice His injunctions through all your years otherwise you cannot enjoy this kingdom. You cannot serve God and be loyal to secret societies at the same time. You cannot serve two masters. I am in control of all powers in heaven and on earth so stop wasting your time worshipping idols that cannot help you in any way. Look at what is happening now. Those who swore that they would never come to the brotherhood of the cross and star are now trooping in here in their thousands. This is so because this is the time of the manifestation of the glory of God. God is at work. I merely come out because of your fear and doubt. If I do not come for a few hours you begin to fear and imagine all sorts of things. These and other reasons inform why I come out to minister the word of God to you at all times. Before now the world thought that we use the Bible different from theirs. What actually baffles them is the power here. They saw only themselves as Christians. How can they claim to be Christians when they indulge in all sorts of evil practices? They consult juju men to procure concoctions and rings, charms and bangles for protection. What type of Christian depends on other sources for power and protection when God is the owner of all powers? The people of the world have tried in various ways to eliminate the Father but cannot. When they try and fail they seek to be baptized. Why do you say that you have problems because you are a brotherhood member? Are you not a liar? The truth is that you have problems because you lust for the material things of this world rather than the word of God. The sooner you make the word of God your objective in coming to this kingdom, the sooner all your problems will disappear. You have been told to refrain from eating meat and fish. Instead of complying you are querying the instruction. You should know that a lot of things go with eating flesh. You are advised to live a vegetarian life so that the Spirit can enter you and walk to the glory of God. Vegetarianism makes you spiritually powerful. Believe the Father and do as He says so that all will always be well with you. Read John chapter 6 verses 47 to 51. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof, and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven, if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. My peace and blessings abide with the whole world now and forever.
Amen.